Oh, how precious is the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, Jesus. I could just hear, hear in my spirit. That just put a smile to my face because I hear and I see Sister Roberta Ross. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. Oh, how precious is the name of Jesus. And I know many of us can say, and I can say, he's a doctor in that sick room. He's a way maker. He's a promise keeper. All we have to do is just call on that great name. Good morning, Remnant family. Good morning. Jesus. And every day. This is the day that the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and be glad in it. So we just thank him this morning for his son, Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. So Father, as we continue in our worship experience this morning, we just want to pause to tell you thank you. Thanking you, oh God, for your son, that you allowed, oh God, to come to walk among man and to be that sacrifice for each and every one of us. We thank you this morning, oh God, because we can call on that great name. We thank you for the opportunity, oh God, that you give us each and every day. And we just offer praise. We come to honor you to lift you up, oh God, and to magnify your name. So God, we just thank you this morning for once again, allowing us to come together to fellowship one with the other. We thank you for each and every one that has joined us this morning. So we just give you praise. We give you honor and we just magnify your name. Jesus, Jesus, oh, how precious is that name. Thank you, God. Thank you. Amen. Amen. We continue in this worship experience with our hymn this morning, Revive Us Again. Revive Us Again, oh God. We praise thee, O oh God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, 
Amen. Amen. Revive us again, oh God. Revive us again. We will now have scripture by Sister Yvonne Fleming, followed by prayer by Sister Diane Wheeler Shepherd. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Remnant. Good morning, everyone who is listening from near and far. Good morning. We continue to ask the Lord, our God, to revive us again. We're going to read this morning from the scripture from Psalm 85, reading from verses 1 through 7. Psalm 85, verses 1 through 7. I will read from the King James Version. Lord, thou hast been favorable unto thy land. Thou hast brought back the captivity of Jacob. Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Thou hast covered all their sins. Thou hast taken away all thy wrath. Thou hast turned thyself from the fierceness of thine anger. Turn us, O Lord, our salvation, and cause thine anger towards us to cease. Wilt thou be angry with us forever? Wilt thou draw out thine anger to all generations? Wilt thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? Show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. The word of the Lord is already blessed. Glory mm. to God. Amen. 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 Amen again. Good morning to everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's praying time. It's praying time. Yes, Lord. Great is. Thy faithfulness. He says, by morning, new mercies, I see. New mercies, we see. For all that we need, it is thy hand that provides. So great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto thee. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, our hearts rejoice this morning, knowing That it is the goodness of God, hallelujah, that brings us here today to worship, to praise, to honor, and to glorify. And yes, oh God, to give thanks to our one and only sovereign God. A God who provides us with all that we need. A God who answers prayers. A God who pours out insurmountable blessings. Blessings of healing. Blessings of comfort peace, joy and happiness and courage, blessings of knowledge and wisdom, grace and mercy, and all, all of his promises. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you. Father, we thank you this morning for 
waking us up and starting us on our way, bringing us into a new day. Father God, we ask for a closer walk with thee. Lord God, make us stronger. Make us stronger each and every day. Give us strength, Lord God, when we feel burdened. Let us be able to continue to trust and obey. Lord God, thank you for all that you do in our lives, Father. Father God, maybe we did not ask all the right questions or give the right answers. But we continue, Lord God, to seek your face, to seek your direction, to come to you, Lord God, for knowledge and keen understanding. Help us, oh God. To, to grow in our Christian walk, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to understand how we are to live, Lord God, according to your will, Lord God. Father God, we ask that you forgive us of our sins, oh God. Seek our heart, oh God, and whatever, whatever, oh God, needs to be removed, oh God, in the name of Jesus, remove it. Give us a clean heart, Lord God, so that we can serve you better. For Lord God, we know that it's only what we do for Christ that will last. So Lord God, this morning we come to you, oh God, in spiritual worship to lift up your name, to give you glory, to give you honor, to give you thanks. Lord God, we ask that you continue to be in this service. Let this service be what you would have it to be, oh God. But Lord God, I ask that you bless all that is said and done. Father, bless our spiritual leader, Reverend Calvin, and continue to strengthen him, Lord God, and use him for the purpose, oh God, for whom you designed him to be. Lord God, let this service be all that you would have it to be. Let us open up our hearts open up our minds and receive what thus says the Lord. Father God, we ask that you touch those that may be sick and afflicted, Lord God, those who need comfort, Lord God. Lord God, I pray for the conditions of the world, oh God, you know all about what's going on. Father God, help the world today. Give us more love, oh God, and let us be able to spread love and joy everywhere we go, oh God. Lord God, continue to use us as your vessel. Continue to allow us to be a blessing to others. Continue to allow us to encourage and to help lift someone up, oh God, when they feel like they're at their wits end, oh God. Lord God, Lord God, when our faith wavers, let us know, oh God, that we can count on you, oh God. No matter what we are going through, oh God, we can count on you. So this morning, Lord God, let us worship you in spirit and in truth. Let us. Lift up your name. 
Let us give you the highest praise. Hallelujah to your name, oh God. Lord God, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice, Lord God, that you would continue to be with them throughout this day. Lord God, that you would allow us all to continue to seek your face in all that we do and even the things that we say, oh God. Father God, we love you because we know that you loved us first. You loved us, oh God, so much that you gave your only begotten son that whosoever shall believe shall not perish but have everlasting life. So Lord God, that's the reason why we are Christians. That's why we're striving for righteousness, oh God. Lord God, grant us, if you please. Father God, we will continue to love you. We will continue to praise you. We will continue to give you the honor and the glory, Lord God. Lord God, I pray this prayer with my brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray this prayer in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. And thank God for the word of prayer. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Diane, for that heartfelt, heartfelt prayer. Amen, Sister. Amen. Live on for that scripture that tied right in with our hymn, Revive Us Again. And I know that's a desire of each and everyone that each day we just strive to be the best that we can be walking in the authority that God has given us mm. just to walk right. So That's if right. each and every day we need to be revived, be mm -hmm. revived, amen? Amen, amen, revive us again, yes, indeed. I know that's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. and this I ask for that oh. every day, Lord, revive me. Revive us again, mm. yes. And isn't it good? To know yes. that he sent his son that we can call on him. Mm -hmm. We can call on him when we feel we're falling short, when we know right. we're falling short. We can call on that great name. That's right. Jesus. 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 Hallelujah be to your name, oh God. Thank you. Thank you. With this time, we set aside this portion of our service to welcome those that are joining us for the first time, those that are maybe joining us for the second time, returning. We want to welcome you in this place. So I don't know if Sister Leslie is available to welcome everyone on today. Amen. I see you, sis. Hi. I am. Good morning. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good I just morning. want to say happy Sunday to everybody. And you definitely are welcome in this place, in this virtual space. We are so happy to have you. The Remnant family is always overjoyed when we have guests and returning members. So to you on this Blessed Sunday, we say welcome, welcome, welcome. You are welcome in this place. Amen. 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 Well, Sister Amen. Leslie, we know that you are still going through, but I thank mm -hmm. God that I hear that spark coming yes. back into that voice. Mm -hmm. Amen. Every day, every day and in every way, it will get better and better. So God bless you on this morning. God bless Amen. you. Amen. Thank Amen. you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sister Ada, I see you on this morning, Queen Mother. It's good to have you on with us on this morning. And at this time, we will have a selection from our music ministry. Praise your name. All the glory, yeah. all the praise. Oh Lord, we praise. 
portion of our service as we continue to worship. This is an opportunity to worship through giving. And the scripture admonishes us to bring the full tithes into the storehouse and thereby put me to the test of the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down an overflowing blessing. And I don't know about you, but I want and overflowing blessing. So let's be obedient to the word of God. It says, given it will be given to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. So the ways you can give is through Cash App at dollar sign remnant family WC and through Givelify, H-T-T-P-S, semicolon, backslash, backslash, 
G-I-V dot L-I backslash H-C-W-L-O-B. And when you get on get Givelify, just look for our logo to make sure that you're giving to the right place. Amen. And God bless you in your giving. And here are our announcements for this week. Join us every weekday morning, Monday through Friday at the 7.30 a.m. hour for Morning Manor, Morning Manor, where we meet to pray and to worship God for about half an hour, 40 minutes. The call-in number is 339-209-4712. Again, that number is 339-209-4712. And then join us on Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. for Bible study and prayer right here in our virtual sanctuary. I'm sorry, the same Zoom session that you're on right now, right here in our virtual sanctuary. That's Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. for Bible study and prayer. And then on Wednesdays at 12 noon, join us for a midday, midweek recharge. The same dial-in number for prayer on Monday through Wednesday at 339-209-4712. If you need to contact the Remnant family, you can do so at 646-287-8972. That's 646-287-8972. Or you can email us at theremnantsfwc at gmail.com. And from Pastor C's desk, reminder, Every sunrise is proof that God is still performing miracles, making ways out of no way and releasing favor. The blessings ahead will always be greater than the battles behind. Be blessed, encouraged, and expect greater. That's from our very own Pastor Calvin Chandler. Now, pastoral remarks. Amen. Amen. Good morning, grace, mercy, and peace. Rose of to each and every one of you. From God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ, it is another day's journey. And we are so glad about that God has so fit to allow our golden moments to roll on just a little while longer. Mm -hmm. And so for that alone, that we are still here, we ought to have an attitude of gratitude. Thank you. Tell the Lord, thank you. Mm -hmm. thank All you. he has done for us. Amen. We have made it and survived COVID-19. Mm, so we ought to give God some praise. Many has gone on home to be with the Lord, and we shall see them in the morning. But because we are still here, amen, we ought to give God glory, honor, and praise. For truly, he is worthy. Amen. We are yet praying, Sister Leslie, as she go through the morning process. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mother Lena, we love you, we send our love. We're praying for the family of Tyree Nichols and the uh, horrific murder mm. transpired a few days ago. Amen. It does not matter the race of the officers. That's it's right. a life loss. Amen. So we're lifting them in prayer on this morning. Amen. I don't know, can't imagine how it feels to be family, to know that your child, your son, uh, uh, life was snatched, what we would see too early. Amen. But there was another son that died. Hmm. He gave up his life. So I commend this family to that family. Amen. Commitment to Jesus. Amen. We, got, we want to celebrate 
Today is our pastor's birthday, Dr. Whitney, 88th birthday. Hey, Amen. When you get a chance, make sure you give him a call, send him a text. Yes, yes. I love him. 88 years on this earth, over 30 some odd years of pastoring. And he dealt with me for about 30 of them, 30 some odd years of pastoring. So you know that got to be an anointed person. <laughs> Man. We thank God for Dr. Whitney. We love him to life. Amen. And thank God. I'm just so excited to be with you on this morning. Amen. I, I'm going to go to two other services after this. I pray my strength. But the Lord is kind. And he is worthy to be praised as we're about yes. to embark on Black History Month. Amen. To celebrate all of the great uh, uh, shoulders we stand on. Let us remember the greats we have in our midst, Dr. Whitney and the other great pontificate of the gospel who showed us we stand on. It's not just about the ones that are deceased and going home to glory, but there are some gentle giants still with us here today. Amen. And still standing on their shoulders, they're still pouring into us, they're still nurturing us. So we're just so excited, delighted to see what the Lord is going to do and how he's going to bless us. Amen. In the month of February. Good to see Sister Ada's on. Yeah. Amen. I believe that's Sister Aki's. I'm going to give you a call later on this evening after my last service. I got your call on the other day. I get just to call you back. Amen. There is a word from the Lord. Uh, morning manna on, I think it was Friday, Tuesday. It blessed me. The Lord took me down using that same thought of yokes and burdens. He gave a word for the people. Amen. So after the selection, I'll come back with the word. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter number 10, verse 27. Make the darkness light before thee. What is wrong? I'll make it right before thee. All your battles I will fight before thee. High place, God said, I bring down with an everlasting love. I love thee, and with trust. Deep and sore, I'll prove thee. There is nothing that can hurt or move thee. And the high place, God said, Walk is by the way, he said, I'll lead thee. And on the fatness of the land, I'll feed thee. And a mansion in the sky, I'll deal. high place God said I bring 
down Although Satan in his rage Would tear thee And with all his winning arts Would snare thee Even down to thine old age, I'll bear thee. Hey, hey, and the high place, God said, I'll bring down when thou walkest by. Said, I'll lead thee and on the fatness of the land I'll feed thee and a mansion in the sky I'll deal. And, oh, and, and the high place God said I Bring down When thou walkest by the way Fatness of the land, I'll feed thee. And one of these old mornings, a mansion in the sky, I'll be thee. And the high place. Amen. The prophet Isaiah, chapter number 10, verse 27. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away off thy shoulders and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Father God, we simply pray that you do it again. Hide me behind that old cross, that he may see less of me and see all of you. Now, kind Father, simply ask you to send the anointing to make preaching seem kind of easy, that someone may cry out, I yield, I yield, what must I do to be saved? Do it again, God. In Jesus' name, amen. One talk with the thought, it's not part of my assignment. It's not part of my assignment. Sir Winston Churchill uh, once said, when I look back on all the worries, I remember the story of an old man who said on his deathbed that he had a lot of troubles in his life, most of which never happened. Churchill was speaking about the burdens of worry that never materialized. However, there were many different types of burdens in life. Some of them were very real. 
Jesus said it like this, come unto me all who are weary and are burdened, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. A yoke is something that Jesus would have made being that he was a carpenter. Uh -huh. Jesus was a, a carpenter. He had a job, praise God. And this is something he would have made. It is a wooden frame joining two animals, usually oxen uh, at the neck, enabling them to pull a plow or, or a wagon uh, or, or to carry something that's heavy. This function of the yoke is to make burdens easier to carry. Uh-huh, yeah. Many of us today, we have burdens. We are burdened by the things of life. We are burdened of the things that we carry. Beloved, we are burdened by so much going on in 2023. But I love the message version. Uh-huh, Sister Yvonne, the message says like this, are you tired, worn out, burned out uh, on religion? Come to me, get away with and you'll recover your life. I will show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me, work with me, watch how I uh, do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Uh, we have to understand that when we walk with God, he's able to bless us. He's able to keep us. Sister Ada, I know you can testify for all your life. God has kept you through many ups and downs, through sicknesses. God has kept you. You can testify that he will take your burdens and make your way easy. Just consider all the things that weigh down our hearts and our lives, death, loss, illness, Worry, politics, financial hardships, grief, guilt, mental tension, traumatic events, each is a weight that we carry that in even our unconscious mind when we sleep, we are burdened with things that make us toss and turn all night. Many of these, of these burdens are inevitable and entirely outside of our control. We're talking about passing some of the things we just uh, 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 heard about the Tyree Nichols situation. Nothing we really can do about it, but pray. It, we wasn't there. We wasn't able to stop it. We wasn't able to control it. We can't control it. But, but if this is a burden and me being a young black man, just to know that I can get pulled over, pulled out of my car, and my life is in jeopardy because of the color of my skin. We're about to go into Black History Month and we see Dr. King and we see all the great abolitionists who fought for our freedom. And yet in 2023, with everything going on around us, all the technology, all the knowledge, beloved, we still are not free, but we carry the burdens of simple being African-American. Hmm. Can I pause here early in the theological station to tell you that even every blessing that you receive from God comes with a burden. There are people hating on you simply because God is blessing you and you're receiving hell from people from things you have no control over because God saw fit to bless you with something. Beloved, you have to understand that, that you don't have to worry about what's going on around you because Dealing with the situation is not part of your assignment. Your assignment is not to worry about what's going on. Your assignment is not to uh, uh, deal with everything else. Your assignment is to do the will of the Father. Uh -huh. They're upset because uh, 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 I'm anointed, but you don't understand the sleepless nights I have to go through when all I can do is pray and cry. You upset because I, I, I got this and that, but you don't know the hell I had to go through to get it. You don't know the tools it takes, uh, the toll it takes on my relationships. You don't know the burden and the loneliness of ministry. You don't know the blessing of uh, 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 
that I get is not because I've been so good, but it's because I carry a heavy burden. It's lonely. It's sleepless nights. I get sickness. I got pain wrapped in my body, but yet I still have to get up and declare the unadulterated gospel. Beloved, you don't know the cost of these blessings. But we have people that were that were hating, that would talk about it and scandalize our name, but you don't know the burdens that's connected with this blessing. You don't believe me? The burdens are connected with blessings. Let me let me let me help you out. I prayed for a career. The Lord blessed me with the career I love. Now I have the burden of a supervisor from hell. I, I, I pray, Lord, I want a new car. Uh -huh. I go outside and realize I have a flat tire. Now I have the burden of spending money to get the car fixed. Uh, I, I, Lord, I, I want a family. Now I have the burden of making sure all ends meet up and food is on the table and the roof is over their head. Every blessing come with burdens to whom much is given, much is required. I, I got to fly my kite now, y'all. I'm out of here. But Jesus came into the world to bear our burdens. Uh, it's not my assignment to worry about how my car note's going to get paid. It's not my assignment to worry about how the doctor's going to give me the medication to heal my body. It's not my assignment to worry about what's going on around me. But my assignment is to come and praise the true and living God because the Bible says like this, all things work together for the good of them who are called according to his purpose. He took our heaviest burden on a hill called Calvary. He took our heaviest burden on a cross over 2,000 years ago. He took our heaviest burdens, the one uh, which we could not have and we could not do. He put it on himself. He himself bore our sin in his body on a tree. We thank God for Jesus on today that we don't have to worry about certain things because it's not part of our assignment. We can give it all to God. Take my yoke upon you for my burden is light and my yoke is easy. Beloved, I come to encourage you on this morning as I make haste to go to my seatings, whatever you're going through, you don't have to deal with it by yourself. You can give it to God. Your bills are due, give them to God. You got sickness in your body, give it to God. Children going crazy, give them to God. Your man, your woman going crazy, give them to God. He created them, let him deal with it. Beloved, we don't have to carry the burdens of the things we're going through. We can give it to God. God is able to handle whatever you are going through. God died. He died on the cross. When he died on the cross, he took everything. And he said, I got up with all power in my hand. You don't have to deal with it. Johnny uh, Walker Red and Red Bull ain't going to help you. That rolling up, that cush ain't going to help you. But if you give it to Jesus, you can make it. Amen. I'm reminded of a story. A young man who was raised with his mother in the northern city. Uh, he was raised in a rough part of town. The crime uh, ripping his community. He was uh, a poverty stricken area. His mother didn't hardly have anything, but she had God. She always said that whatever God tells you to do, just do it. Uh, whatever God wants you to do, just, just follow his direction, just hold on, and God would do his part. Uh, when this man became an adult, God gave him a vision to start a business, not in the business uh, district, not a business in, 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 the, in the bougie part of town, but, but to start a business in the middle of his own neighborhood, right in his community. God gave him the blueprints. God gave him the specs that he needed. Uh, he wrote out the proposal. He, and then God told him to go down to the financial institution and get a small business loan. Uh-huh. Uh, he went and he went down and he began to put his stuff together. He got dressed and, and at this point he's waiting to hear from the Lord on, on what bank to go to. The Lord never spoke. Uh, he did not show him what bank to go to. So he went down to the biggest bank in the downtown part of the city and and, and, and he got to the bank, he, he had his portfolio in his hand, he spoke to the receptionist and told the receptionist, I'm here to take out a small business loan. And, and the receptionist picked up the phone and called upstairs and 
called some people trying to find someone to deal with him. Finally, she got word back that not only did the agent want to see him, but the vice president of the bank wanted to see him. He was over all small business loans. He went up to the man's office, walked in the office, and when the man turned around his chair, he, he saw it was a brother. The man in his mind, oh yeah, I got this loan now. He's a brother. He's going to make sure that I'm good. He's going to help me out and give me the hookup. He looked around at the wall and saw that the banker went to Howard University. He saw that the banker graduated from Harvard University. He gave uh, the man his portfolio and told him what the Lord had showed him and to open up a business in his own neighborhood. When the man got through reading the portfolio, the man got through reading the portfolio and listening to the man's story, then he said, young man, I uh, uh, think that alone is not the way that you should go. He cut the young man, cut him off and said, sir, I understand I don't have credit, I don't have collateral, but if you would just give me a chance, I promise you that if you give me this loan, I'll make good on it and I'll make the business work. The vice president cut him off and said, I just told you, young man, you don't understand me. I, I said, I don't think alone is the way you should go. The young man cut him off again and said, I understand that I may not be able to, to give me as much money as I'm asking for, but if you give me a portion, I, I, I'll i use it uh, 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 to start the business and I will pay it back that I can come and get some more and we can do this in, in small increments and do it in phases. The vice president said, just hold on, young man. I said that I don't think alone is a way to go. The young man gets upset, jumps up, grabs his portfolio off the man's desk and said, I can't stand brothers like you. Every time a fella like you makes it, he forgets where he come from. He starts to make it hard for people like me that's struggling to get where you are. You forgot uh, where you came from. You forgot about uh, us trying to make it and trying to make it out the hood. The, you start off doing good and you forget where you once was, and as he turned and walked out the office, the vice president jumped up behind him and ran and closed the door and caught the man's attention and said, just hold on, young man. There's a few things you misunderstood and misinterpreted about me. Uh, first of all, you misunderstood by looking at the degrees on my wall where I started off from. I did not start off in the city, but I was raised in the country. My father and my mother were sharecroppers. I spent more time in the field than I did in the classroom, but they saw something in me and did everything they could to get me out the field and into the college classroom. I was not here on scholarship, but, but I'm here because I worked every day. I had to work my way through Howard. I had to work my way through Harvard. And even with the degrees and the letters behind my name, you would have thought I would have started off behind this desk, but but I didn't start off behind the desk. I didn't even start off as a full-time teller, but I started off part-time teller and a part-time janitor. I had to work my way up the ladder in this institution, but on my way up, I met some people that could help people like you and that, that, that wants to help people that's low and that's down in that side. He said, I met a group of businessmen that specialize in giving grants to minorities to start small business. They'll give you the money that you need and make sure you're sustained in order to get started. They give you the supplies you need for your business and they will financially sustain you until you can make it on your own. You don't have to owe a dime back to them. I, I came to tell you that all I need to do is pick up the phone and make a call and file a few papers and you take it down to them. That's why I said, I don't think a loan is for you. The man standing there, tears build up in his eyes and I'm sorry, sir. I did not have the patience to wait to hear what you was telling me. He said, it's all right, Charlie. I'm just going to tell you what my mama told me when she sent me from the fields on to college. He said, build your hopes on things eternal and hold to God's unchanging hands. I'm out of here, y'all. I got to go hear Doc Whitney preach, but, but I got to tell you just how I know blessings is in your future and how I know that God hasn't forgotten about you, that he is still uh, on your side 
that the Lord has something for you. I know that the burdens are heavy. I know that your pillow is wet with tears, but just hold on to God's unchanging hand. You may ask how I know that you can hold on. Well, I know you can hold on because before you held on to him, he held on to you. He held on on one Friday morning on the Calvary's mountain. They put a crown of thorns on his head and he kept on holding on. I, I got to quit here. I got to go. But 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 I got to tell you that Jesus held on with nail in his hand. They ribbon his feet. They hung him high that he could have came down and summoned angels to rescue him. How do you know? Because there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from a man who was veins with sinners plunged. And they are saying, Jesus held on when he dropped his head in the locks of his shoulders. You know what he did, right, y'all? He died. He, they laid him in a borrowed tomb. But I'm so glad that he didn't stay there because early on Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands. This is why I can say stress and aggravation ain't a part of my assignment. Because when I want to throw in the towel, I just hold to God's hand. When the burdens get heavy, I just hold on to God's unchanging hand. Sinners in my body, hold on to God's unchanging hand. Trouble on my job, hold on to God's unchanging hand. When your money is funny, hold on to God's unchanging hand. When the change gets strange, hold on to God's unchanging hand. Just hold on. And when you feel like giving up, quitting is an option. Why? Because quitting is a part of your assignment. I come to serve notice on today that no matter what you're going through, to hold on to God's unchanging hand because quitting is not part of your assignment. The stress is a part of your assignment. Giving up is a part of your assignment. Depression is a part of your assignment. Just hold on. The Bible says it like this. Matthew, take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my the burden I give you is light. Don't stress and aggravate over the small things, but just give it to God because he can handle it. He will make the darkness light before you. He can make the crooked ways straight. Whatever it is you're going through, I come to tell you that Jesus is the answer. All you have to do is trust him. All you have to do is keep him as the center of your joy. But Jesus is the center of your joy. I come to encourage you, my brothers and my sisters, that we hold to God's unchanging hand, that we build our hopes on things eternal and hold to God's unchanging hand. Amen. God bless you. That's all I have for you on this morning. That's what God told me to share. No matter what you're going through, that you don't have to give up, that you can change if you want to just hold on to God's unchanging hand amen this is you may be asking how can i hold on to his hand how can i build this relationship make this relationship with him it's as simple as abc that you have to admit that you have sinned that you have believed in jesus christ and you have to confess that jesus is lord if you have done them three things abc that's how you build this relationship and become in good covenant with God. Do me a favor, pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner in need of saving. And I ask for your forgiveness. I believe that you died on the old rugged cross for my sins and rose from the dead with all power in your hand. I turn from my sinful ways and invite you into my life and invite you into my heart. I confess you as my Lord and Savior and I follow you as my Lord, my Christ and King. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you have prayed this prayer with us, if you have done your ABCs, I want to say congratulations and make the best decision of your life. Reach out to us, give us a call. Send us a text message at 646-287-8972.
You can send us an email at the remnant fwc at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. We would love to pray with you. We would love to pray for you. We are a ministry standing on prayer, and we touch and agree with each and every one of you. Amen. We have a prayer request, so before we close out, we're going to uh, uh, bend a chain on this virtual century and begin to pray for Sister Simone. Amen. We don't know what she's going through. We don't know the obstacles she faced. But we come to commend her to one that died for her, that's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all she can ask or think. So kind, Father, we come today first telling you thank you. We thank you for the woman of God who's coming to us, God, requesting prayer. What we love about you, God, is that we don't know her. We don't know the situation she's facing or going through. But, God, we know that you know all about her. So, God, we simply ask right now that you meet her very need, God, that you go wherever she may be right now. Touch her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. Lord, we pray right now, even as she in the midst of bereavement from the loss of her husband, God, we pray that you comfort her like never before, that you wrap beloved arms around her and you keep her in perfect peace. God, touch her mind right now. Touch her family right now. God, even give strength to her body right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we come interceding on her behalf praying that you give her everything she needs, that you will walk with her, that you will talk with her, that you will give her the strength to endure this dark moment in life. God, we pray on today that your name will get all the glory. God, we pray on today that you will love on her even the more. God, meet the needs, God, whatever needs to be done. We pray you send the resources. God, whatever needs to be taken care of, we pray you send the people. Connect to who she needs to be connected with in this dark moment of her life. Let love lift her, God. We pray even now that you will touch the entire family, God. We pray even now that the light so shine upon them that they will have peace in the midst of mourning, God. The Bible know, God. that we've been made endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So God, we pray even now for our sister that she will get some peace and get some comfort, even in the midst of mourning. For God said that I must go before you, but I will send back the comforter. God, give the comforter to her now. And God, give her the peace to know that if she live right, that she shall see him again. That on that great getting up morning, at the last trump shall sound, that we shall be caught up to meet him in the air. God, give her comfort. Give her peace, God. Give her happiness. Yes, God, give her yes, joy. God, it is our prayer on today that you make a way out of no way, that you open doors, that you will heal, set free, and deliver. God, whoever's standing in need of a healing right now, God, we commend them to you. Whoever's standing in need of blessings right now, whoever's standing in need of some joy right now, God, we know that you can and you will. That you ain't able again, to but fail. So God, we put everything in the palm of your hands where we know that you can handle it. That we know that you can and you will. So God, we come calling on that great name saying, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We come calling on your name, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come see about your children. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, we need you. Jesus, we love you. So therefore, we're going to worship you and adore you. Hallelujah. Touch now, God, from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet, meet the needs of your people. And God, we'll be ever so careful that we will give your name all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory in the name that's above every name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I want to cause the sun to rule by day and the moon to rule by night. To the only wise God, our Savior, be all glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. And we all said, Amen. 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 Go in peace and walk in the reality of a done thing, knowing that it's not a part of your assignment to carry a heavy burden, but take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. God bless you until we meet again. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Word. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Amen. God. Thank you, God. Amen. Mm. Amen. Amen again. And Simone, have a very great day. We will continue to pray for you throughout the days and the weeks. If you would join us in the morning at 7.30 a.m., we will continue with our prayer. Amen. 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 Yes, ma'am. Is that on Zoom at 7.30? I will text you. It's um, it's not It's by Zoom. phone. Just by, by phone. phone. Okay, if you can text me the information, I would love that. I need all the prayers that I can get. Um, really need a move of God right now um, for me and my children. Uh, we're in Texas all alone. And so we're having to take his body out of state um, mm-hmm. in order to be around family. And God has made the way to do so. Right, so now. he is he is on his way to Oklahoma. Um, the Lord, I, I work in the nursing field and the Lord connected me with a mortuary that I work with um, while um, the patient, uh, the one that comes to the nursing home and deals with the patients. And she said, the Lord spoke to her and told mm. her to do something for my family. Mm. And so she transported him free of charge. I don't have I to worry about it. So she Good transported Lord. So now me and the children are, all we have to worry about is getting there, gas and food. And once we get there, um, the Lord has made the way with the insurance policy has come through so that we can lay him to rest. So please mm. pray our strength, pray my strength. Cause as a mommy, I still have to be mommy, even though I, I, I want to go somewhere and crawl up under something and scream and cry, but I've got 14 year old twins and I've got a baby boy who's a year and a month. So please pray my strength. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Simone, do you have a pen handy? I could give you the number. Uh, yes. Okay. It's 339 209. Four seven one two. That's three three nine two zero nine four seven one two. We're on at seven thirty.